Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sam and I make videos about autism and neurodiversity every single week. So please subscribe if you think you might like that kind of content. Today I'm going to be doing a little Q&A, just a casual chatty sort of video. Also to say thank you to over 2,000 of you who have subscribed. Um, I am constantly blown away by all your kind comments and everything like that. So this is sort of a celebration video and I thought I'd answer some of your questions. But as always, all the questions are asked over on Instagram. I will put up an Instagram story at a random point whenever I feel like doing a Q&A. So if you're interested in having your question answered, you can either go over and follow me on Instagram at YoSamDSam, or you can just ask a question for the next time in the comments here and I will try and write it down somewhere. So the first question is, do you feel like an imposter when talking about your autism? I often do. I did feel like this for a long time because I was diagnosed only this January, so like 10 months ago, and it's taken me a long time to really get that it is a part of my identity. Actually, it was going to a retreat for autistic women. The experience that I had there got rid of a lot of my imposter syndrome and especially talking to a couple of my friends afterwards who were just like, you're really autistic and in a super obvious way. <laughs> and when they first said that, I was a little bit upset actually because I was like, but I've been trying to hide it my whole life. But when they said exactly why, you know, like this is how you join conversations and this is all of these different things about why they think that I looked autistic to them. I really started to realize that, okay, this is actually something that people do notice. And as much as I think maybe I was masking really well, maybe maybe I wasn't masking that well. So it's really been the last couple of months, especially learning more about autism. The more I learn about autism, the less I feel like an imposter, actually. And I hope that this channel can help, um, can help some of you realize how deep it goes even if you are only on self-diagnosis at the moment or you have no opportunity to get a diagnosis sort of formally um i hope that by continuing to talk about my experiences and my perspective that it will help eradicate some of your imposter syndrome as well because i know it's not a nice feeling you sort of feel like everybody is making fun of you in some ways like oh she's not really that autistic i mean i have i have people friends of the family who've looked at one video and gone, oh, she's not autistic. And it's like, excuse me. Um, so it's actually really hard not to have imposter syndrome when you're dealing with stuff like that. So it is something that I kind of worked through over the course of this year, I would say, over the course of 2019. It still comes and goes though. So if you do have imposter syndrome, like, I would say it's pretty normal. Even after you get an official diagnosis, it doesn't necessarily go away. And it really, for me, it, take, it has taken many months of self-reflection and learning and research and that sort of thing. So the next question is, what does a shutdown feel like for you if you have them? I would say before I had a child, I would have more shutdowns and fewer meltdowns. Um, I would have meltdowns very occasionally if things were really pushing me. Having a child is very um, energy intensive, so it drains your energy and just makes everything more intense. And so I have found myself having more meltdowns um, since having a child, which is not a nice feeling and it's not, it's not behavior I want to model, but on the other hand, it's also not behavior. It's, it is completely out of my control. But when I have a shutdown, I normally have them to prevent a meltdown. Um, so if I'm in my own house, I don't try so hard to prevent it. If I'm out of the house, I will usually try to prevent it because there are consequences to having meltdowns in public, you know, not just humiliation, but also, you know, if you really have a proper meltdown, meltdown you know, people will call the police or something. So shutdowns tend to be like a safer way to deal with the emotions and the build-up inside my head. So for me it really feels like I am trying to shut out everything. I'm getting so distressed that I'm not just trying to sh shut out everything that's going on around me, but I'm also trying to shut out the internal discomfort and pain that is building up. Typically what it looks like is I will find myself not able to say anything very helpful, like just shut up, just shut up. 
if I've ever done that, that's a shutdown. Just, just leave me alone. Um, I'll typically put my hands up like this as well to physically block, create this sort of, um, this sort of space. Sometimes I won't be able to talk very well. Sometimes I will try and physically make myself safe. So usually like backing up against a wall or standing by a, a pillar or something, just having something so that, because if you're in the middle of a room, you feel like there's a whole circle of stimuli all around you. Whereas if you're kind of backed up against a wall, it's like you just have this fragment to focus on. And I guess this isn't really what it feels like, but what it looks like is that I can suddenly get very, um, that's the word I'm looking for, like argy-bargy, like suddenly I'll get, I'll, I'll, a, a switch will flick and I'll be very like rude to people, but aggressively rude. Argy-bargy, I think, is the word I'm looking for. So shutdowns don't, it's usually me trying to stop progressing towards a meltdown. And I don't typically take too long to recover from them. It depends on the situation that kind of spurred it on. Sometimes I'll have sort of like emotional shutdowns where if something really painful happens, it's like I go completely calm and so calm that people are like, are you okay? But I will be con completely convinced that I am absolutely calm and maybe my hands will be shaking violently like this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. I'm absolutely fine. So yeah, that's kind of like what a shutdown looks like to me. But uh, I haven't had a shutdown in a while, actually. I've had a couple of meltdowns recently for various different reasons, but they've all been in the house. Next question is, how did you feel when you first had an idea you were on the spectrum? It was a bit of a, a shock is the wrong way. It, I, I felt a little bit negatively because I felt I've, I had some sort of internalized ableism and I thought, I still thought of autism as like almost a bit of a dirty word, like a bit of a bad thing to be. And so it took me a while to really get into, through that whole, oh, it's a disability, oh, these people are less than, um, to get into the world of neurodiversity. And then as soon as I discovered this, and I don't know if you just picked up, that was my tummy rumbling really loudly. Um, I don't know if the mic picked it up. Um, as soon as you get through the the stigma and into the world of neurodiversity, it becomes a lot easier to accept. And also because it just felt like, oh my gosh, this is so me. This is the me that I've been looking for for 30 years. This is the answer to all the questions that I had. So when I first found it out, I didn't really feel, or when I first had an idea, I didn't really feel that great. But if it didn't take very long before I started to be like, oh no, this is actually not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's just a different thing, and it's good that I'm solving the mysteries of my life. Do you find it hard to listen to the many stories neurotypicals tell about daily events? Um, yes. <laughs> I find myself quite often drifting off if somebody is telling a long, boring story, um, or just talking about something I'm not interested in. I'm getting worse at masking as I get older and more tired. So yeah, if I'm in a situation where I feel like I need to be very polite and smile, I will be polite and smile, but I do find it hard to listen and then by definition I find it hard to pay attention. Next question, did you experience pushback from healthcare professionals? I've experienced pushback from healthcare professionals pretty much my whole life, but on this one occasion, no I didn't. I literally went to the, do the doctor, the GP, and said, I think I have autism and these are the reasons why. And then she referred me to someone else and I said, I think I have autism. These are the slightly longer, more in-depth reasons why. And I didn't get any pushback, but that's because I was in a, a place of confidence. I knew that it was autism. I knew at that point that that's what it was. So I was able to structure that conversation. And other people are not so lucky. They don't maybe get someone quite so knowledgeable or understanding. So uh, no, but I was lucky. Um, somebody asks, how would you deal with overstimulation at school? Now, I'm not sure whether you mean like secondary school or university or anything like that, but I would say controlling your sensory environment is important with regards to noise and lights. Taking as many breaks as you can, especially if you need breaks from people around you, rather than hanging out during break times, like go away and find a cupboard <laughs> to sit in. And I think more of us need to be communicating our needs to school. I mean, schools, I think, are different, but universities 
some of them are great and some of them are not but i think if we all start communicating our needs more and making the general population more aware of autistic needs or certain common autistic needs um we can gradually start to change things so the last question is um is your channel name a reference to yosemite sam and this person in the comments actually said something which reminded me of like way back when. So I will tell you a little story. My uh, nickname at school used to be like Yo Samdi Sam, and um, and then I would call people would call me Samdi Sam or Samdi or you know Sam eventually. But one I think it was one friend who started calling me Yo Samdi Sam, and um, and so it kind of stuck. And I just thought it was a cool name. I I didn't get the reference because I didn't get that Yosemite Sam was called Yosemite Sam. I thought it was like, his name was Soundy Sam, and because of the yo, I didn't get it, so we just kind of deleted it, so I thought his name was the Soundy Sam. And this person in the comments said exactly the same thing, and that's why I found it so funny, because I was just like, oh okay, I'm not the only person who didn't get what Yosemite was, because you like, I don't know, I must have been quite young at the time when I watched the, uh, is it Looney Tunes? Yeah. So I had no idea what Yose where Yosemite was. So it was just funny how both of our brains just deleted this information and were like, well, he's called Samdi Sam. But yes, my channel name, uh, Yo Samdi Sam, is a reference to the Looney Tunes cartoon Yosemite Sam, who, if you don't know, is the guy with the big hat and the red moustache who gets really angry and starts firing. I'm not like him. I <laughs> This isn't like a, a a comment on my personality, but uh, it was kind of a nickname at school I had. And coming up with a channel name is really, really hard, so I went with this one. So I hope this was interesting or fun or enlightening or emotional for you. Um, <laughs> I, Q and A's are really fun to do because they are just giving me a little bit of uh, a break because they're easier to film. And I hope that you enjoy hearing a little bit more about my experiences in a more chatty way. I've got a lot of really exciting videos coming up in the next two months. Um, I've planned out all my content even if I hadn't quite filmed it yet. So I hope you will check back frequently and hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button so that when I put a new video up you actually get notified. Because if you just subscribe to me, chances are you might not see every video. So press that bell and then you will get notified every time I publish a video, which is normally weekly. So thank you so much for watching as always and take care. Bye.